the only leader in the game that is better to have as an AI ally than to actually play. Today we are going to go over Sumeria and Gilgamesh. We'll talk about some strategies that I like to use when I play as them and rank them based on victory types with the final overall ranking as a sieve. Remember, if you like this, comment, like, or even subscribe to my channel. I'm pushing towards my goal of 1k subs and YouTube is even lowering the standards to 500 subs. And thanks to all your help, I'm super close to that goal. All the time I spend on these videos feels very worthwhile when I read even just one comment on any video that I make. Gilgabro is a hard leader to talk about. His ability, Adventures with Enkidu, pushes you to be a warmonger and an ally at the same time. Things that do not go hand in hand in this game. You get no warmongering penalties for declaring war on civs that are at war with your allies. You share pillage rewards and combat experience to a, a unit within five tiles that belongs to an ally. And you get extra alliance points for being at war with a common enemy. And all of these things are hard to leverage in a single player game. This is a sieve that is designed to play in hot seat or on multiplayer with your friends, just not competitively. You need allies, which you're not going to get in a multiplayer game online. Warmonger penalties do not matter in a single player game. It really won't come into any sort of play later unless you're going for a Diplo victory. The AI pillages very randomly, so you won't be getting that bonus for yourself. You'll be using the pillage bonus to boost your AI ally, and alliances really aren't strong enough to care about. But Gilgamesh does have a completely separate leader ability. If you're playing with the Heroes and Legends mode, which I almost always do, and I feel like most of the player base does now, I feel like most players play with a lot of the game modes on, you're going to get a 25% production towards Heroes, and they last 20% longer. This is a better overall bonus. If you're playing as Sumeria, play with Heroes and Legends on. Heroes are broken and they are designed to be. They are designed to warp the game in ways that the game is not balanced around. And being able to get key heroes like Hercules or Mulan or Anansi or Sinbad before any others can do it is great. This really helps your second and third cities come online because heroes get more expensive after each one you build. But this isn't a completely game breaking bonus. Heroes are not hard to get and it's not enough of a production bonus to claim every hero in the game before the AI can, and you still need to discover those heroes. Sumeria itself gets the bonus to Epic Quest, which means that when you capture a barbarian outpost, you get a random tribal village reward, usually gold or an envoy or experience, maybe a eureka or an ex inspiration, an extra one. This is good, but it's not amazing. And it's better if you spawn towards the poles because barbarian clan or barbarian tribal villages usually spawn in tundra. But if you leave, you're going to be clearing barb camps and then the AI is going to be settling those cleared areas and you're not going to have too many barb camps to work off of. The ziggurat, Sumeria's unique improvement, places plus two science on a tile. And if it's next to a river, you get plus one culture and another culture later in the game. This is not a great improvement. It looks great, but it's not good. It just pushes you in the early game, but it starts to fall off really fast. You want to spam these out to get a real bonus, but each worker in the early game is very precious, so you can't waste their charges. You'll build two or three of these, and that's all you can afford until you get feudalism, and at that point, they've run out of usefulness. You need to use that science to get some early techs and then ignore them, and you'll probably even district over them later in the game. They do come back to be better later as you settle crappy third wave cities until those cities can come online with their districts, and then they'll start to district over their ziggurats. The ziggurats I don't think are as bad as other people think, but they really need to be improved with like food or housing or production. In real life, ziggurats were the center of a city. It's not just like a school or a religious building. They were centers of cities in Sumeria. So some sort of bonus to food, housing or production on this, just give it a better yield overall, a more useful yield than just early game science and culture. The best thing Sumeria has is the war cart, a heavy cavalry unit that you can build from turn one. It gets extra movement when you start on flat land and is 30 combat strength, which is insane at the beginning of the game. The window to use them though is really fast. Don't build scouts, build war cards and kill whatever you find with those war cards. 
When playing as Sumeria, I think the early game is much more important than normal. Civilization is a snowball-y game, but you do need some consistent bonuses throughout the game to have an easy game. Sumeria doesn't get that consistency in exchange for snowballing faster. Every part of your kit is designed to zoom through that early game. Your barb camps are going to push you farther than other sieves, your uniques require no techs, the ziggurat is meant to zoom you to the classical era techs and civics, while war cards are the ultimate attack and defense units for about 30 turns. So if you're wasting any of those turns, you aren't getting the full effect of your sieve, and these bonuses disappear until, well disappear about halfway through the early game. Once you get into the second era, you're moving into the medieval era, these bonuses aren't going to exist anymore. Build two war carts and rush out a settler. If you have a close barb camp, take them out. Settle your second city and build more carts out of it and a builder in your capital. Get ziggurats down in your second or first city. If you have good district locations, put the ziggurats in the second city and district your first city. And once you start districting, move those ziggurats into other poor production cities until they can build their own districts. If you're close to a neighbor, you have to take them out and move from there. Otherwise, you just won't have the staying power to overcome the deity AI later. Sumeria works best as a domination sieve. Get those early bonuses, take out a neighbor with your war carts, move those bonuses into further conquest. The war cart is going to help you conquer a neighbor quickly as long as they are within a couple of turns of your capital. 7 out of 10 for domination. Science would be the next way that I play them. Ziggurats aren't good, but they will boost you to writing very quickly, and you can get some empire-wide science that can be supported with Kilwa or city-state bonuses later. Any percentage for your empire benefits the Ziggurat, not to mention that Pingala himself will benefit Ziggurats in his city as well. You get no production though towards building projects, which you need for the space race. Although, if you're playing with Heroes and Legends, you do have a better shot at Hercules than most to build that spaceport faster, so 5 out of 10. Diplo also works surprisingly well as Sumeria because you can push into military emergencies with your allies, but this means that you're sacrificing the domination bonuses you have until these emergencies start, which is anti-Sumeria because you need to use your bonuses as early as possible, so again 5 out of 10. Everything else just isn't worth it. Yes, ziggurats can give you tourism, but it's not enough to be worth pushing for, and you have no incentive to get a religion unless you roll on something like a barb camp, like getting a relic or something. So 3 out of 10 for that. Gilgamesh just isn't fun to play. He's designed to be a, here you go younger brother, you play this guy while I play this guy multiplayer sieve. I much prefer to play with him than as him and I'm going to be giving him a D rating. He needs an actual leader ability. Maybe in Heroes and Legends mode, instead of getting the production bonus, you get access to all of the heroes at the beginning of the game, your choice. Or maybe give his ziggurats housing food or some production. Something like that. Or maybe double his pillaging bonuses and give 25% of that to an ally. That would probably improve him greatly but he's never going to get improved outside of modding. Thank you everybody for watching, and if you like this, remember to leave me a like, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.